Oh, wait, a lot of lights. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, this is my favorite topic in the blockchain industry in the Web3 development. Game, Web3, uh, game industry. I like it, I love it, and I, will, I hope to make it very interesting for you. So, this is, will be our journey to challenges and opportunities in Web3 development. I am a dungeon master today. This is my party of heroes who survived last long winter and now here. Uh, I, will ask, uh, I will introduce myself first and give a word to every, all the guys. So uh, my name is Evgeny. I'm a founder of uh, Layer 1 protocol that not yet shine, but we're doing everything for it. Uh, and a uh, game, collectible card game, Meme the Gathering. The balls kicker in the industry of collectible card games that we want to make it fair. Uh, my experience is almost already seven years since 2016 uh, in the blockchain development uh, in different areas. Uh, it's given me a hell of experience that in the areas that I now I hate, probably business, marketing, whatever, I like to build. And that's it. I will give a word to Sabine. I have my micro, thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sabine. Um, I'm the head of business development at Fun Token, which is the leading iGaming token in the industry. Um, around since 2017, like myself, I started my blockchain uh, experience 2016 and on a professional level since 2017. So I've already done two crypto winters and still alive. <laughs> Um, and we have a sports betting platform, a peer-to-peer -peer sports betting platform, the first of its kind, a uh, crypto casino, and also Fun Token is backed by the biggest crypto faucet in the industry, Free Bitcoin, with 51 million registered users. Um, and I will talk about my experience um, and the uh, like outlook for web free gaming, more on the iGaming space. Um, yeah, that's from my part. Uh, okay, hello, I'm Ramon. Um, I am the CEO of Taitico. Taitico is a game that um, started before um, when the market was happy. And uh, <laughs> then we just um, see the stars blowing up with, uh, with the incidents that we all know from the last month. So, um, as you said, we survived on, on this uh, beer market. So, for us, it's something incredible. Uh, keeping up, pushing with uh, investment, uh, development, etc. We started on blockchain a lot of years ago, but um, all of our knowledge has been focused on this product. This is a, a web that is uh, probably being launched between December and uh, January, actually is in beta stage. So um, I am here representing a, a, a super crew of investors and, a, and one of the best teams, uh, at, least, at least here in Barcelona. So happy to be here and to share with you uh, all the thoughts about the Web3 gaming. So hi, everyone. I'm, my name is Pachi Barrios. I'm Web3 product at Telefonica, one of the biggest telcos in the world. Um, prior to Telefonica, I founded in 2017 Champion Games, that was one of the very first uh, gaming Web3 developers. Uh, we created a, a game, um, a football metaverse that call, it called uh, Meta Soccer, that was the one of the biggest games in terms of volume and mostly of the users with more than 200,000 uh, users. I'm really happy to be here with you guys. Thank you, guys. Uh, before we continue, I would like to ask quick questions. What are your two favorite games? Um, for sure, they are not blockchain games. Okay. And uh, that's, what is the... that's why I'm here um, trying to change the markets because um, I think uh, there's some funny uh, elements okay. faulting in the, in the Web3. What is uh, Web3 game develop gaming for you? What is Web3 gaming for me? Mm. Well, it, it's a challenge, but at the end, it, it's, a new, it's a new technology. So uh, that's, uh, for me, that means uh, ownership for players. That means uh, security and a lot of things that I think that uh, will be important especially for the players. Not, not, not that much for the companies, because at the end it's technology, but I think that for players the things will change, and it's a game changer for sure. Great. Okay. Uh, also to say about myself, my favorite game is uh, Dungeon Dragons, as you probably already <laughs> noticed. <laughs> and, um, well, I could say Dota 2 maybe, but no, <laughs> I don't like it. 
How about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm the one who is behind the operations and the business, so I really like the games that are generating revenue and creating more, I mean, engagement, but also monetization. So I really like games like Candy Crush, or maybe, I mean, we were talking about uh, Stumble, uh, Stumble Guys also. So these kind of games that are creating products, but also creating new monetization on top. I, I really love the, these games. And your second question was re regarding the Web3 game, you know? What is it for you, the Web3 Yeah, for me, I, I, try, I tend to see the Web3 gaming as a new step on the, on the gaming industry. So a new monetization uh, um, uh, disruption. So at the very first, uh, the very first uh, uh, monetization revenue that we had in the gaming was uh, retail. So you go, to, I mean, you go to a, a, ball, a shop, you buy a game, and you enjoy the game. Then we had the game as a service, or free, free to play. Uh, that was another concept of how to, how to play the video games, but also, I mean, the revenue, where, where, where it comes the revenue. And now I think Web3 Gaming can give new product, but also new monetization. So I, I tend to see this new disruption also in terms of new product that we can create with ownership, new ownership, NFTs, and so on, but also a new monetization system. Good. For me, actually, we have uh, three gaming. It's uh, in two words. It's a freedom and um, fight against monopoly. Monopoly of the big companies who stop building good games, actually. Already for, maybe, I would say, 10 years or something. It's uh, time for indie games race to race because uh, with blockchain technology, we can do really good crowdfunding as a, it started Kickstarter, for example. I see big opportunity here. Uh, Sabine, what about you? What do you think? If you have favorite games, share it with us. And what is Web3 Gaming for you? Um, Web3 Gaming is basically trying to give user the possibility to own in-game assets, such as NFTs, um, to be able to earn money in these games. Because a lot of gamers, they spend hours a day game playing games, and which are fun and it's addictive, but at the end they don't earn anything for it. So unless they are the pro gamers and they have sponsors sponsoring them, um, and Web3 enables the possibility for them to actually make a business out of it, to, to be the best and then to, to sell, uh, to win the best in-game assets, the best NFTs and, and trade them um, and give them the ownership. Um, and, but this also opens up possibilities but also challenges because once it's on the web, on the blockchain, uh, we have a big scalability problem because um, if you have to do every every trade and every and we've seen it with all these games like X Infinity, Gods Unchained, and so on, where where like the the transaction fees, a lot of those games were on Ethereum and the transaction fees were just so high that this was not scalable. Um, so so that is a big challenge still. And also if you compare Web3 games to like the traditional games, they cost hundreds of millions uh, to develop and they have those big budgets. But Web3 games, none of them have like 400 million to develop a Web3 game. So most of those games are not fun to play. Um, they were just being played like Ax Infinity from Filipinos or like, like, like Venezuelans that just tried to make an income out of it. And then once the Ponzi scheme collapsed, they all just lost money because it was like only possible to pay out while, while new players came in. Yeah, you're so, actually starting to mention the, the, the topic that we're coming to, the yeah. problems and challenges. What I want to mention is we're not in the beginning. Uh, the hype was three years ago started. Yeah. The, for one year or a bit more, it's a long winter. We're all suffering <laughs> of the situation in the market. Uh, I want to ask you about your experience that which challenge to come. For example, you mentioned Axe Infinity. For me, all these kind of games that started two years and a half, it's a failure. There are much more development of the, on the blockchain technology started five, six years ago. There are gods on chain and other games. But they all, after all, failed. Uh, we need to understand why. What you felt as a developers in the different areas, business development, game development, and uh, fundraising, for example. 
what are the challenges in these past three years? Was for you? Well, you please start. Yeah. Okay. So, so for instance, I mean, the the main learnings that we uh, extract from Meta Soccer that was uh, this is still being the the second biggest game in terms of football and uh, what three. I mean, we have so rare that is the first one, and then it's, it's Meta Soccer. Uh, the big learnings were related to to the economy. So we we launch an, uh, an a token economy, dual token economy, and and to be honest, we didn't expect the the what happened in in I mean one or two years ago. I mean uh, to find that people from Philippines, people from Argentina, people from Venezuela were basically playing eight hours per day because they were seeing and a job, not not a, not a, a game. So the big learning for us. Was was that we we grew a, a lot. I mean, we, we had a, around uh, to 200,000 more active users uh, in the peak. Um, but the, the big problem was the growth was uh, based on pe DeFi people instead of gamers. Okay, and, and that was the main learning. I mean, if you if your game is full of people that is only thinking in in DeFi, in only to extract revenue, but the game is not decoded, so you cannot maintain, you cannot sustain an, 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 a stable economy. And then when we go to the Web2, we, we went to the Web2 to try to attract gamers from football like games like FIFA and so on. So we did we couldn't, I mean, uh, achieve this kind of milestones of K. Okay, so we can attract these this users, I mean, using influencers, whatever. So we couldn't because the message that we were giving in terms of maybe play to air, win to air, were not exactly what uh, Web2 gamers were expecting. Uh, could, could, um, you say, could you say that there is even a hate, kind of, uh, especially from the Web2, from the classic game industry, hate to this concept play to earn it's like now become even dirty word yeah for uh, in my uh, in our project we totally uh, went out from the concept play to earn no the first always should come the experience of game you, 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 come on uh, we for the last 40 years we were playing games without any <laughs> yeah. uh, earning uh, uh, earnings and we are happy. So this is what I saw um, problems in most of the Web3 games. They don't really care about um, game experience. That yeah. was sad. Yeah, yeah. I and think th that's brought hate that now even more challenges for all game developers. Yeah, I think that the, the biggest challenge is on the marketing communication side. I mean, how you can explain all the benefits that I mean, Web3 is now creating on, on the gaming industry to a, ga to a gamer that what they want is not to earn money, what they want is to engage and then maybe after the, we have a 5% of payers that maybe are used to earn money with the game. But the 95% of the gamers are not really interested on, on, on earning money, I mean, as a first uh, step of the game, no? So we need, this is a challenge of how we can explain the benefits to this 95% of gamers that they really want to engage. Yeah, the NFT, I hate this word. Useless mm -hmm. word, uh, useless concept. No, 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 no. Even though I hold hands for the technology. Uh, how about you? What do you think? Well, as you said, um, the, the first wave of games was, uh, in my opinion, and I include right there Axe Infinity. That's something that people will hate, but uh, I'm sorry, that's my opinion. Uh, it's a wave of shit. I mean, if you like games, you can not like... The, the only game that I see that uh, have a little bit of, of funny inside was Tetan Arena, in my opinion. It was funny, I, I just played a little bit, but with a bad uh, tokenomics, so it means that, um, as, as you said, if there are no more new players, uh, there are no more revenues, so you're basically losing your money. So at the end, what happened at the beginning is like uh, with every single industry. Um, for example, um, people started downloading movies at their homes, and actually we have Netflix. This means first community talks and first community express and, and, do, uh, and they get used to do some things, and then the industry must be um, smart enough to, to take those habits and transform it with good products. So that's why um, Taitiko is actually uh, going to be released, in, as, as I told you, in two months, but uh, we haven't um, deeply taken a look at, at, which, um, at which kind of, of layer are we going to use or things like that. Finally, we, we saw it with Polygon and Immutable X, which is just uh, cool new technology. But for me, the most important thing was, what are we creating? 
are we doing a Ponzi? Do, you, do we want people to put the money and just get that money and go out? No, because we, we are just a, a company that make game, makes games. So for us, the most important thing was, OK, let's focus on the product. Actually, the product is outside. You can play it without blockchain. Because for us, the most important thing is that you get fun, as you said. Because if not, that's not an, a game. That's another uh, kind of game of the first wave, which is just crazy. And also, the first um, wave of games was terrible for, for the people who is actually uh, developing games, because they set up a precedent when, when the, if you put your money in, come on, hurry up and sell everything in two months, because the game is going um, is gonna to crash. So we sp spent six months doing in a, 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 a normal, uh, just taking maths and, and saying, OK, how can we make to, um, for the players to don't lose money, to don't need more new players uh, in, to pay the, the, the first revenues, et cetera? And, um, and that was it. So uh, for me, first wave is just um, community expressing what they want, uh, even mix it with, uh, with, some Dex uh, with some DeFi users. But if we can achieve that funny games with that technology, that would Th that will explode. Uh, I mean, there are some cool new games like Blancos that are just uh, trying to do some cool things. Uh, we are also right there. So I think that the new wave will just um, upgrade the industry to be able to do products without um, a terrible tokenomics. OK, now let's hear Sabine from yeah, another side. As mentioned, so it can only be sustainable if it is the gameplay the first and most important part because for the gamer they should have fun playing it and earning money is on site and it has to be a sustainable tokenomics like that it is self sustainable that it will not collapse that basically um like tournaments or like in game like you have like a kind of a revenue pool like it is in traditional eye gaming, you know, you pay in and the best one that wins, and if you're not the best or you had bad luck, you you lose. And then it on, only then it is sustainable on the long run. And we are, the games are changing now. After this failure, what happens and this collapse, the games are now changing. Um, even the existing ones, they are more and more focusing on on. Uh, fun in gameplay and they change their tokenomics and there are some really good projects out there that actually develop good web free games um, like for example decimated which I know the founder they they have real like like in other shooter games and so they they will attract those real gamers and that's what the industry needs and then, of course, the user experience, the onboarding process has to be as smooth as possible. Like, they have to use the blockchain technology in the background without even knowing that they use it. Because at the moment, it is way too complicated. You need a MetaMask wallet. You need to buy this token, then swap it on one decentralized exchange that has listed this no-name token. Uh, it is way too complex. Yeah. Um, and that is something that is the, that is the real challenge it's getting so getting the non crypto users on board and actually you came you uh, came to another topic <laughs> <laughs> that I wanted to ask uh, about its uh, adaptation uh, that they don't feel that they use blockchain because they don't care about it okay uh, now only few big companies starting to speak or be enough brave to say something that hey let's to use blockchain technology, but like uh, Epic Games, for example, that uh, most known as a Fortnite developer, and now it's a platform, the concurrent of the Steam. For me, the big pain in the ass uh, for all of us, it's a Steam itself with the Gaben <laughs> uh, that is totally monopolized the whole industry. So now we have two, three platforms that. Um, uh, for, for all the players, it's nonsense uh, if you think about how it was 20 years ago. And the blockchain, I, like, I'm surprised that no, at least I didn't see platforms that was really offering to use blockchain technology for, uh, for example, uh, buying and selling the copies of the games. 
right? For people to be able to own them as they did it 20 years ago. You buy your CD, you play it, you give it to a friend, and he's playing it, uh, or you sell it for a little less money. And with blockchain technology, com big, even big companies could fix the problem of black market, even though it's not black market, uh, by reselling it and getting fees. But no one is doing it. Uh, or something I heard, rumors about 70%, which is nonsense, the tax, the tax fee. And uh, what do you think about this? Is it opportunity for indie games? Uh, what? The light you see there, maybe you are working on something like this. What do you think, Sabine? Um, yes, there is, um, there is opportunity, as you mentioned. Uh, uh, actually, maybe there's something, the similar problem in the iGaming industry. Yes. As mentioned, um, we, we, they're, they're the most, the most uh, Problem. The biggest problem is still the onboarding of uh, non-Web3 users into Web3 yeah. and the scalability. Well, for um, for us, it has been solved using Immutable X because it's just crazy uh, for us. So uh, we have been talking with Patchy just five minutes ago that uh, uh, if you started a game uh, just uh, three or four years ago, it was just a pain because you need to do a lot of layers, things like that, uh, throw your users to create a wallet, things like that. But Actually, it's, uh, um, for me, technology is advancing. There are new things coming. So um, the biggest problem still for me um, is um, the legal part of all of it. Because it's so hard to, um, to explain to governments or things like that. And that, that's something that we are not talking too much about. But uh, for us, the, the, the most difficult thing is not doing a, a, a good game, is not onboarding users, is not uh, controlling the technology. For us, the most uh, difficult part is Legal things. So it's so hard to uh, throw out tokens and things like that. Europe is just changing with Mika Laos and, 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 and things like that. A new Mika is coming again. So um, for me, actually, the technology is enough for doing good things. But the bad things, actually, for me, uh, on, on the industry, it's that the Laos are not protecting or helping companies. Instead of that, are encouraging them to go out and find some jurisdiction when you can throw your token, you can do. And that's something I really dislike, because I love doing gaming, not just spending my time with uh, tons of, of, of lawyers. And quick question, you can say quickly as well. Uh, what do you think? Uh, who will change the whole entire game of industry? Uh, the guys who are now controlling it, like Steam, uh, Epic Games, or some new player will arise, Maybe even I could think about GOG, because uh, it's much more fr user friendly uh, for players, they're not that greedy, or it still will be in control of the Gaben. <laughs> I think it's, it's still dragons. the time for the indies, I think. But um, as always, or uh, uh, always happens in industries, um, uh, indies will lead. Uh, this this, uh, this opening, but at the end, uh, see, mm, big big players like uh, Epic Games, etc., will just um, buy where they want. Uh, as as the uh, Microsoft as will buy you, <laughs> probably. Like well, they we, we will, I, I hate um, personally. I hate Microsoft, so I I'm, I, I think I prefer to 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 get my my game into the into the trash bin. <laughs> yeah. What do you think yeah, about think opportunities for <laughs> indie games? Sure. Uh, yeah. How to fight it. I think that we are already seeing this, this, I mean, this situation. I, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I mean, Singa or King were startups creating new games on the, with a new monetization model. And I don't know, uh, Midway or Nintendo were not focused on this kind of games. And I think that we had the same situation now with another technology that is Web3. No? So I think this is a, a really good opportunity for new gaming companies uh, because from a management perspective, if I were, I don't know, um, the CEO of uh, Activision, so I, 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 I think that is a bad step, I mean, to go to Web3, being the, the CEO of Activision, because it's risky, because you need new technology, new compliance, new legal risk, so it's a really risky for a big company that is in the stock market to, to go all in with, uh, with uh, uh, Web3, so I don't expect uh, big companies like King or Activision go, well, King and Activision is the same company right now, but uh, Activision and, I don't know, Nintendo go all in to the, to the Web3. I expect, like, in three years, when we have the traction, they will invest or they will buy 
the new companies or maybe these new companies were, will be really, really big. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask now each of you, what is your patient? What, what do you really want to success in this uh, industry? What do you want to make? Uh, let's have a, like one minute quick qu about your dream. Uh, for me, I, I will be um, I will be super happy if I just do a game that it's not getting killed in one year by itself. So um, uh, it, it seems um, something obvious, but it is not because uh, we've seen a lot of games just crashing down. So for us, the most important thing is having the people to get fun, but giving them uh, the opportunity to to spend uh, as more time they want playing and knowing that everything will stay. Uh, right there when they want to come again. That's something that will make Web3 layer uh, in gaming in industry uh, something standard. So for me, the, the, the challenge actually is uh, making something that can uh, long for uh, four or five years. That will be mm, one of my biggest interests actually in, in the industry. Sabine, what about you? Um, my dream, like I would also want that like Yes, there are the legal challenges, uh, really big, but to have the big games introducing NFT and Web3 into their gameplay, like the traditional games. Like I used to love SimCity when I was a child. I game played it all the time and now even, um, or Sims. Um, so like playing those games, but then actually like being able to Introducing a web free seems uh, um, decentralized seems is a very cool idea. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually a kind of web, uh, <laughs> metaverse, it's a potential metaverse. Yeah, let's see if it's key, if it will come. Yeah, exactly. So, having those games in web free um, would be really cool, and also. Uh, the community itself, like that the people are able to engage with each other, like they, they like Sims in the metaverse, like it actually it is kind of, but it is not yet that advanced and we are still years ahead of it. But having, having the avatars then interact with each other and really like, yeah, communicate. Yeah. That will come and maybe <laughs> we'll regret it. <laughs> How about yeah, you? so on my point of view, I think that the, the game that survives is not the game that has the best product. It's the game that has the best product, the best game, but also the, the best monetization engine. So I really think that the Web3 will, I mean, improve <coughs> the gaming industry in terms of the product, in terms of the gamification, but also the monetization creating new paradigm of, of games. What's your dream to, to do in this industry? What do you want, really? I mean, I mean, we have now, uh, thanks to the free-to-play, we have now 4 billion uh, gamers. So half of the population, I think, yeah, if I'm not wrong, are pl uh, playing games. So I really think that is the, the first entry to the Web3. I mean, we are talking about 4 billion. If we can go all in with Web3 in the gaming, so we can adopt, I mean, a lot of people, millions of people to the Web3 technology. You want to get them all under control and rule them all? No, <laughs> no. <yeah. laughs> kidding, kidding. The trilemma will be there. <laughs> uh, well, what uh, I can say that uh, industry of web game development really need, I just didn't maybe find it yet or saw it, some platform uh, based on the crowdfunding platform. The, not like there are many now, but more successful like Kickstarter. Kickstarter yeah. is very friendly and uh, nice uh, platform and uh, brought us a lot of new uh, projects. Like I have only a warm feeling when I'm thinking about uh, Kickstarter platform. When I'm thinking about crypto fundraising, usually it's a scam or something else. I hope not, and this will help a lot in the games, in the industry. This is why actually blockchain is perfect uh, for uh, crowd crowdfunding in this case. Uh, and uh, I hope there will be, maybe we'll build together after all, some uh, concurrent uh, who will go against Steam and will bring ownership and uh, freedom to use your games as you want, collect them and whatever as it was before, many, many years ago, when it's all started and brought us all here. Thank you very much. Uh, upload to guys. Thank you for your experience. It was a pleasure and honor to meet you and um, moderate this 
stage. Thank you.